I know many of you guys know this already. When we have 2 to the fourth power, this is actually pretty interesting because you get to switch the base and the exponent, and this is actually still the same as 4 to the second power because they are both equal to 16, of course. And in this situation, we say that the base and the exponent, they commute because you can just switch the base and the exponent and they are still equal to each other. But that's not generally true because, for example, when we have 2 to the third power, which is 8, this is not the same as 3 to the second power because that's 9. So they are not equal to each other all the time once you switch the base and the exponent. But this gives us an interesting question. Is it possible for us to find out more pairs of x and y so that x to the y's power is equal to y to the x power? And to make this even more interesting, let's first assume that we are not going to have x is equal to y, so I'm saying x is not equal to y in this case, right? Because if they were equal to each other, it's obvious. For example, when we have 5 for the base and 5 for the exponent, of course this is the same as 5 for the base in red and then 5 for the exponent in black. So let's not worry about these kind of situations. That's why I have x is not equal to y to make the solution more interesting. And in this video, that's also focused on the real solutions. So x and y are just real numbers. If you have the complex solutions to this equation, you can comment down below and let us know. But let's focus on the real situation in this case. First, let me show you my, you know, like a slightly more straightforward approach, but this is not as good as the second one. I notice this equation has two variables, and that's usually not preferred, right? So in this case, what I can do is, can I just try to assign some value to a variable, and I will solve the rest of the equation. And because x and y are pretty much symmetrical, so I will just say let's assume some value to y, and then focusing on solving the x from the remaining equation. And let me just demonstrate with an example. Let's just say that let y equal to some nice numbers. You can pick 5, you can pick 7, you can pick maybe 1 half, or things like that. I don't guarantee the resulting equation is solvable or not, but just a nice equation right here, the nice example right here, okay? I'm going to let y equal to 3. And I will get x to the third power because y is 3 now, and that's equal to 3 for the base, and x is still x, like this. How can we solve this right here? Unfortunately, I cannot do algebra to get a close form for a nice answer, but what I can do is I can just solve it by graphing to get an approximation for the x. So what I'm saying is that, let's go ahead, you can first graph x to the third power, and the graph of that looks like this. And secondly, you graph 3 to the x power. And notice that this is an exponential growth function, right? So the graph is going to look like this. And you can verify this on your own. And first, it's going to cross it right here. But notice that exponential function, this right here, it's going to beat x to the third power somewhere else. So the red curve is not going to stay below the black curve all the time. Somewhere, this is going to go back up and overtakes. <laughs> so in fact, this equation has two real solutions. But this is just one approach, and it's not great, right? Because it has a lot of limitation. But it's nice and easy, I would say. Now, second approach is more legit. So let's focus on this right here. First of all, notice that our first pair, it was 2 and 4, right? It looks like we have 2 for the x, and then y is 4. And 4 happens to be 2 times 2, right? Hmm. So does that mean y is always going to be somewhat a multiple of x? I don't know. And let's give it a try. So in this case, what we are going to do is I'm going to begin by let y equal to 
some multiple of x in the following sense. I will have the x, and I'm trying to build out a connection, and I will actually introduce a new variable, and that's legitimately called the parameter. I will use t for it, but you can use any letter that you want. Suppose y is in the form of t times x. And based on this, let's try to solve for x and y, both in terms of t. And if you have studied like, parametric equations, uh, this kind of approach you may be familiar. Anyway, let's focus on the algebra right here. Suppose that we have y is equal to t times x. Let's plug in this information into this equation. First, I will have the x as how the is, but this y is going to be t times x now. And then this is equal to the y is t times x, but don't forget to put parentheses and then put in the t times x for the y and then raise that to the x power. So now I have this equation. It seems slightly more <laughs> ridiculous, but don't worry, I will take care of that. Keep in mind, our goal is to actually solve for x. x has to be in terms of t. In that case, I can actually assign some values to t, and then I can produce the x. And I will do the same for y in a second as well, right? But let's focus on this first. How can we get x by itself? Well, notice the right-hand side, we have this to the x power. This is x to the t times x power. But look at this right here. When we are multiplying the powers, I can look at this as x to the t's power in the parentheses and then raised to the x power, right? So I will change that and then raise to the x power like that. And on the right-hand side, I will just write this down as tx for the base right here and then raise that to the x power. I'm not changing anything except for the colors. And notice both sides they are raised to the x power now. So what you can do is you can raise both sides to the 1 over x power. And we're just focusing on the basis right here, right? And the left-hand side, it's going to be x to the t. And the right-hand side is just t to the x, I mean t times x. Uh-huh. Hmm, how can I get the x by itself? x is the base right here. Shall we do a logarithm? You can try and let me know how it goes. I'm not going to do it because I am going to just divide both sides by x because this way it's actually pretty nice because right here I can kind of just subtract the exponent. This is just x to the t's power over x to the first. So all in all, this is just x to the t minus 1 power and this is equal to t to the first power, right? You just divide both sides by x. Easy enough. And then, I only have one x right here, right? I only see the x one time. That's what I mean. x to this power, of course, I can just do the reciprocal power again. So I will just raise both sides to the 1 over t minus 1. 1 over t minus 1. So that this and that will cancel because you multiply the powers. They can sort each other out nicely, and then you get x equal to t to the first times uh, raised to that, so you just multiply the powers, you get t for the base, and then 1 over t minus 1 power. And this is the first equation for the x, just like the usual parameter, pra parametric equations. In calculus too, pre-calculus if you haven't done that. And that's nice, but what's y? It's actually much easier because you see that y is equal to t times x. So from here, you see that I can divide both sides by t, and I can say x is equal to y over t. And now you have the x, which is that. I can just put it right here. So I'm saying that t to the 1 over t minus 1 is equal to y over t. And of course, we can multiply both sides by t, and we can solve this. So multiply both sides by t. So cancel this out. And let me write down the y first. And notice, this is just t to the first 
power times t to the 1 over t minus 1 power and you can just add the exponents now so altogether it's going to be t for the base and then 1 plus 1 over t minus 1 and this is pretty good but if you would like you can of course get some common denominator so this is like t minus 1 and on the top is like t minus 1 as well and you can just add the fractions on your own so finally you see that y is equal to t for the base t minus 1 plus 1 is just t and then you still have the t minus 1 right here so it's t raised to the t over t minus 1 power so on all, as long as x is in this form and y is in this form for some value of t, then you will be able to get x to the y's power that's equal to y to the x power. So just pick some t value and work this out, work that out. You can be able to generate a pair that's going to be impressive. And let me just write this down for you guys. Power. And this dial, it's really similar to how you can generate the Pythagorean triples as well. So if you haven't seen like that approach you should go you know check that out maybe i'll do a video on that later on as well but for now let me just work out an example for you guys right here as long as you pick a good value for t then you can get uh, x and y first of all t cannot be equal to one otherwise you will be divided by zero in the power right here so that's no good and if t is equal to one you are saying y is equal to x seriously that's like redundant so we're not going to worry about that but let's pick some, um, let's say, let t equal to 3. And you can actually pick fractions if you would like and just work that out. But let me just work out a whole number for you guys. Anyway, right here, x will be t, which is my 3 right here, raised to the 1 over 3 minus 1. Work this out real quick. This is just 3 raised to the 1 half power. In another word, square root of 3. Likewise, for y, we get 3 raised to the 3 over 3 minus 1 power. And this is going to be 3 raised to the 3 over 2 power. And this is square root of 3 to the third power. And this is, of course, square root of 27. And now you see, you generated this and that. And it's guaranteed that when you have square root of 3 for the base and then square root of 27 for the power this will actually be square root of 27 for the base and then square root of 3 for the power this is real cool right and you can pick any other t that you want um, don't be too crazy but uh, you can have fun with this